That's what I meant, living fast, that live fast mentality. The Taoists were on something completely different. They weren't trying to speed up the process. They were trying to cultivate and conserve their life force because they already expected to live a long life, right? They expected to live a long life. One thing about longevity that I think is pretty accurate is that the longer, the more you want to be here, the chances of you being here are better. The longer you're going to get to be here, most likely. Right? It just seems to work that way. And that's a part of longevity. That's not often talked about is do you actually want to be here? A lot of people don't want to be here. They're in so much pain, so much turmoil, that they're, they're trying to speed the whole process up. Right? They're just trying to get out of here as quickly as they can. Right? So you actually have to decide for yourself, do I even want to be here in the first place? And once you got that, then everything else, you can attract whatever else you want to you. Right? Because now you have your dharma, you have your destiny, you, you have a better idea of what you're here to do. So Hoshi Wu is one of those herbs that cultivates that essence. And the jing is your battery pack. Your jing is your adrenals. Your jing is like your hamstrings. It's like your, your um, bone marrow, your stem cells. It's your brain tissue. It's also your, your potential. It's literally, energetically, your pure potential. So there's prenatal jing and there's postnatal jing. When you're developing in your mother's womb, everything that your mother um, uh, takes within her, nutritively, all the nutrition that she takes within her is helping to build her jing, but your prenatal jing, which is your predestined genetic destiny. That makes sense. It's storing up your power. And then when you're born, you have your postnatal jing, which is basically like your adrenal energy, right? And your neurological energy. So Hoshi Wu is one of those herbs that helps to, to conserve that energy over time. One of the things about longevity and health in general that really everyone needs to know about, needs to understand more than just food, is the way that we live our life the day-to-day -day actions and decisions that we make and the stressors that we entertain are either investing within us, they're helping us conserve, or they're exhausting us. And that's why nutrition is so important in the first place, is because we live in a super stressed out world, right? We live in a world that we can't avoid stress, environmental stress, emotional stress, all of it. So we need to actually have a, have, we need to have a type of nutrition strategy that helps build a foundation underneath us that we can stand on. Ho Shu Wu is one of the best things going, herbally speaking. Let's pull up passion flower. Well, that's how that when you get a Ho Shu Wu extract, that's how you get it. Yeah, it's, I've seen it both ways where it doesn't have it, it does have it. So. Okay, yeah, so there, there's raw, there's raw Hoshu Wu, which is a medicinal herb. So if you want to make Hoshu Wu tonic, then you have to for, you combine that fermentation process with the black bean. Sometimes people use soybean. I would prefer black bean because I'm not really a fan of soy. Too much phytoestrogens um, and many other factors involved with that. Um, but yeah, typically when you get an extract, it's going to be, it's going to be a, a fermented extract basically or it's going to go had that process done so do, you know, do you know any of the science behind that why they would do that particular there, well there's a certain compound um in hoshu i don't know the na the name of it but it's it's an alkaloid right so one thing about really powerful plants and all wild plants is that they contain alkaloids so for example caffeine is an alkaloid theobromine in calf or in uh, cacao is an alkaloid. The um, anandamide is an alkaloid. Dimethyltryptamine is an alkaloid. These are substances that have therapeutic value at the right dosage, right? And so hybridized, the, the reason that we really bred out so many foods over the generations is because we wanted to breed out the alkaloids, the medicinal properties. Like almonds, for example, had 
more what's called vitamin B17 or amygdalin or laetrile. If you study cancer, this will come up a lot. Vitamin B17, laetrile or amygdalin. Almonds used to be a really great source of that until we started breeding them excessively and hybridizing them to make them way more, sugar, way more sugar content, lower mineral content, and virtually no vitamin B17. Apricot kernels do, though. Apricot kernels still got it, just, just to put that out there. So that's, that's pretty much the basic idea there. That's why you would ferment certain things in the first place. It's not just to colonize the bacteria, um, the colonies, although obviously that's the, the main point, you're transforming, you're alchemizing certain compounds in certain foods. So they're more, they're more, I guess you could say, biologically um, assimilatable to the human body. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and by the way, with all the questions, um, write those down for me. We're going we're gonna to take a break very shortly, and then we're going to go back into Q&A. Um, OK, so passion flower. So passion flower is one of the most amazing, I mean, it's the, the best flower ever. It has to be. To me, like, has anyone seen a passion flower been right up close with one? They're growing wildly here on Kauai. What I love about this is that it's got a lot of bells and whistles to it. Now, we talk about hormones. This right here is one of the most important herbs to know about. One of the most powerful flowers to know about. It has a compound called chrysin. And chrysin is one of the most studied, what's called aromatase inhibitors or estrogen.